Performance nutritionist Daniel Davy here, and I am delighted to finally be able to talk about the new product I've developed with Kinetica, Collagen Joint and Muscle Support Complex. In this product, we have a specific type of collagen called Fortigel that has been specifically developed for joint health. It's also complemented with vitamin C, which is known to be important for the development of new collagen. It supports your immune system too, of course. There's hyaluronic acid in there, which is important for the production of the synovial fluid, or the, the mobility and health of your joint. It has vitamin D, which is also important for supporting skeletal health, and glucosamine, providing the key building blocks for overall joint health. When this product was being developed, I had somebody specifically in mind that would help support the key messages about the benefit of this product and that was Josh van der Fleer, one of the best rugby players Ireland has ever produced and World Player of the Year. The reason I thought of Josh is not just because of his consistency and his attitude to preparation, but also because he used the specific collagen protein in this product during periods of injury. He used it as a part of his broader strategy for nutrition, but importantly noted the benefits and to support his recovery. I was fortunate enough to sit down and have a conversation with Josh about his preparation, his mindset, nutrition and supplement strategies before he went to the World Cup. It was a brilliant conversation where I actually learned more about Josh. I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope you do too. We've always had such great conversations about nutrition and I wondered where was that fostered from or where did it start? Because you came into the academy with that interest. Um, I suppose when, when we met then, um, it kind of completely uh, changed my whole knowledge, I suppose, and, and diet in the way I was, do you know what I mean? Because you, you kind of pick up things here and there or there's things your parents say to you maybe about nutrition that that maybe we a bit more old, old school and yeah, we, and I've loved... Uh, Loved all that I've learned and all the work we did together. It seems like you've got a really, there was really strong values around food in the home. Was that led by both your parents? Yeah, well, well my mum mostly, uh, she did all the cooking. Um, my dad, all oh, my dad's side of the family have an incredible sweet tooth. So I think my mum was kind of spent most of the time trying to hold him back. Um, but my mum would, uh, yeah, she'd always encourage us to eat uh, good food. She'd have done most of the cooking and it was always, it was always fairly healthy where possible and um, we're very fortunate that way in that um, it was always always well fed, it was always nutritious, good food and I think that's it's important especially how we're, me and myself and my brother and my two sisters we were so active, we were always running around in the garden, we were always uh, had a big appetite and always well fed after. And when did you start to cook? Yeah, I remember helping my mum in the, in the kitchen with peeling potatoes. I would, it wouldn't have been making meals now or anything. Um, I remember making a... Mum made me feel incredibly proud because uh, I helped. She made a roux sauce. I'd like stirred something or I can't remember. I was quite small anyway. And, uh, and mum said that I made it. And I was just like, obviously I'd probably done absolutely nothing. I might have poured a bit of milk in or something. That's the kind of thing that has such a huge influence, particularly on children. I even, I see it now as being a parent myself, how it doesn't matter how small the action is, but they're becoming a part of the process of cooking. And then there's that little bit of, of reward. Uh, and like you said, being made feel like you're a part of it. Uh, and this, this is something that's important in the home. Here we talk about the role of supplementation and how important consistency is. I remember kind of I was, I was injured and we were kind of making plans around the things I could improve while being injured. And then one of the discussions we had was you'd introduced collagen to me. And um, I suppose with the, the aim to try and strengthen up the joints and the, and the tendons. And um, I think when you're when you're in that situation of professional sport, um, you're trying to, like getting back to training a day earlier could be the difference between getting back for a match. If you, if you don't train that day, they won't let you play the match the next week. So it's, it's such fine margins. And I think we'd probably, we'd gone through nutrition and we'd gone through all the, 
the little small details of training that I could get done, the rehab, and then I suppose introducing collagen was was that extra. I suppose we were looking for an extra edge again, something that might help, and um, it was definitely something that I found helped a lot. Um, it's obviously it's hard to tell. It's very hard to like gauge exactly because you come back from injury, be like, well, the rehab went well, the my nutrition was good, I was taking collagen. It's hard to like attribute anything to something specific but I think when I was taking collagen um, and when I've been taking it for rehab and and even throughout throughout playing the last couple of years um, it's probably when my joints have felt at their best and have probably recovered the quickest. Here we talk about Josh's overall nutrition strategy and looking at a period of time when he was injured and the key things he did to get back to full fitness. It's very tricky when you're injured as you said you're you go from from a nutrition point of view where you're you're eating to to prepare for training you're eating your you're upping your carbs to build for a game then all of a sudden you're injured and you're looking at you could be looking at two weeks could be looking at a year out it could be a long time um and then obviously your motivation to to make sure you get up early and get your breakfast in to make sure when you're tired just come on from re from doing your rehab whatever it is that you're still going up and, and making that, that extra meal you need to get your calories in. It's definitely very hard. Um, one thing I found worked really well was having like having some sort of a, a reward system. Um, might not be necessarily nutritionally, it could be, um, right, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna work really hard to rehab, I'm gonna get everything right. And on Saturday, I'm going to go to the cinema and I'm going to watch my favorite movie. That helps with the with the mindset of it as well, because it obviously can be can be very difficult. Yeah. Um, and also trying to look at your another thing I've found has helped me while I was injured was trying to look at areas that I could really improve. So that's something we would have talked about a lot. So it could be um, if it's a, a lower limb injury, it could be you get your upper body strength up could be you practice your passing and all of a sudden you've kind of shifted your your mindset and all of a sudden you're motivated to eat because you're trying to get your upper body strong you're trying to get your bench press up your bench pull whatever it is you're trying to get strong in all those areas and then all of a sudden you have you have your motivation to eat you have your motivation to keep your calories up and that kind of thing so that's probably the things i've found have helped this is a product that i have full confidence should be a part of athletes rituals you know it should be a part of if you want to maintain strong joints and you want to progress and and have a strong body that is, is as resistant to injury and even if you are feeling that wear and tear that there's something that you you can do so i suppose just to go into a little bit more detail <clears throat> the collagen is a fortigel and it is formulated it's one of the most well-researched types of collagen uh, in the world, which aims to be far more specific to joint health or to, to tendon health. And I think that that's something that's really important. Where is, where is the science? Like the science in collagen is still relatively new compared to other areas, but it's emerging all the time. And then complementing it with vitamin C, because vitamin C, has been shown to help support the, the synthesis of collagen and, and the formation of collagen. And to have that it there in that amount, which will also support immune function. Vitamin D for good general skeletal health, uh, from everything from mood and hormone production. Um, again, as a dosage that is not excessive, but can be taken year round. Uh, and then hyaluronic acid, which is a natural part of our joints anyway, in the production of synovial fluid and the way that the joints move. And there's some interesting stuff now coming out in uh, people who are managing osteoarthritis and how that managed, it helps to support reduction in pain. Having a consistent process and routine is critical for athletes. It's a big part of their preparation leading into big games. But you also need to be adaptable. Here Josh talks us about the importance of fluidity, being adaptable, because you never know what can happen leading into big games. Josh also talks about the advantages of being aligned with a brand like Kinetica, supporting his nutrition strategies when he's on the move. It's very convenient really, like, so 
leading up to to a game and even throughout a regular training week um having those supplements available to me is is uh is hugely important um there's definitely we we spoke about the the collagen and having that to make sure my my joints are strong and feeling good and then um whether it's the so the whey protein you're taking after a session if you don't have time to to get a full meal in or the or the energy gels taken before or during a game um they're definitely controllables that that you can rely on you can throw them in your bag i have them in a bag there's no there's probably very little situations where that's not gonna end up um end up working out for you unless your bag gets lost in, in the airport or something people are really interested in the little things the small tweaks that you make day to day to impact your performance here i ask josh about the little things that he does to be at his best leading into training, recovering, and of course in preparation for big games. At the moment, um, because it's pre-season, trying to get a load of calories in, and probably have a bagel with the, with the eggs, then you're heading off to, heading off to training. So we'd um, start off going through a bit of a movement health type thing. So uh, whether it's a bit of stretching, a bit of rehab kind of exercises, um, anything that, that that the body needs, I suppose, to get going and get ready for training for the day. Um, after that, we'd kind of have a little opportunity to I'd have another another little snack. Could be um, could be a banana, could be a, a protein shake, and then and then we're into say our gym exercises and throughout gym because weight is quite important to me and try and hard to, to keep to keep my weight up. I'd have a kind of high carbohydrate drink during during my gym session then. Then we're into our lunch. I have a big, big healthy lunch normally. Just um, you have your carbohydrate, could be, uh, could be potatoes, you have your meat and your veg. It's pretty, um, pretty straightforward. You have a bit of sauce here and there. And then we go out for, for rugby training on the field, staying hydrated. Sometimes depending on how, how tough it is, you might have a bit of a, a carbohydrate or a rehydration type uh, solution in the, in, um, in your water to try and get through the session especially this time of year it can be a bit warm and and they're normally an awful lot of running and then we'd be we'd be out of the training facility and back home for for dinner then um, so we have our dinner um, same similar to lunch uh, good carb source vegetables meat depending on the day i'd probably have some yogurt granola some berries a um, bit of protein in as well um, and then I'd uh, I'd have my collagen normally then just before bed. Very good. Last thing, right? Um, you, you are one of the best people I would I've ever known to be your own man, right? We've talked about this a lot. You do you so well. Are there any quirky things like you look fantastic? You do <laughs> like you you are the epitome of good health. Is there anything quirky uh, that you do to keep yourself, like little triggers that you know have been good for you to bring you back to the present? Like you've been fantastic for even the mindfulness part of your work yeah. and might, you've really felt that that was a big part of your preparation. Is there anything else that might have even developed over the past two years? Well, visualization stuff I've always kind of done. Um, it's probably, that's a quirky thing I do. So I, uh, so I'd try and visualize like practically for rugby. So from a performance point of view, um, I'd be like trying to play through in my mind, um, doing a pass or a move we're doing or making a tackle or whatever. if something specific I want to work on. Um, there's actually, there's a good bit of research behind that that it does, it kind of triggers the same pathways as if you were actually doing it. So I find that beneficial, but I, it's been the same since I was, a small child I am like constantly visualizing or like in a daydream almost so if I'm like I love to play golf if I'm like I'll be walking around here thinking about a golf shot or I'll be like or I'll be walking past a couch imagining it's a it's a defender and I'm trying to sidestep them so you'll see me it's like if you had a camera on me the whole time I'd be like you'd see me off on my own going to walk and I'd be like just on the the footpath and I'd be like Doing, I'd be like twitching or something or like doing a sidestep, but I'd be like just always playing, 
imagine, I imagine it like um, imagination. I'd be one of those kids who'd be like, could have been two hours on their own pretending I was like James Bond or something, just running around on my own, just imagining everything. So I suppose that's probably a big imagination that way. Josh, I absolutely love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for everything, Josh. Thank you. That was brilliant. <laughs>